Look, I'm gonna be honest. I don't really like beer that much. Yeah, probably not the best way to start this one out, but that's the exact reason why you should start brewing your own beer. I'll explain. It is a Saison, AKA a French farmhouse ale. It sounds super fancy, but in my opinion, it is the most perfect beginner beer to make, period. It's because the yeast that is used in this, you can do it in your own house at room temperature. This beer is gosh darn delicious. Now remember, you gotta be 21 years or older to be drinking, so uh, if you're watching this video and you're younger, hey, thank you, don't forget to hit that like button, but do not drink any alcohol. Very bad. Now with that, let's go ahead and make this, shall we? Now before we get started, we're gonna need to talk about equipment. Not something I usually like to discuss, but it's important for this. Now, for the record, I will have a detailed document that has all this listed in the description. So let's just talk about the bare essentials. The main thing that you need is a fermenter, which will be a 6.5 gallon carboy, plus an airlock and a stopper, and then a large enough pot that can easily hold five gallons, a muslin grain sack to steep your grains, yes, sack is funny, and a racking cane. That's it. That's all you're gonna need. Beer brewers, if you're watching, we're gonna talk about hydrometers. Let's just wait for that, all right? So as a part of the recipe, I'm actually getting some sanitizer liquid prepared because the most important part to brewing is sanitizing. Every single brewer will tell you this. You must sanitize everything that the finished wort is going to touch. Otherwise, you risk some major health hazards, which, by the way, I'll explain what that is in just a moment. That same document in the description will also have a list of stuff that you need to sanitize just to help you out. Now, for the ingredients, you're going to need a couple different grains that are just sort of cracked. And a lot of local homebrew shops will do this for you. I actually went to a local homebrew shop called Soko Homebrew, and they had all the grains that I needed, and they cracked them for me, and I literally just walked away with a sack of grains and did it. So I would really recommend looking for some local homebrew shops because it'll make your life a lot easier, but of course you can also get it all online. Last, the yeast that we're going to use is going to be W Yeast 3711 French Saison Yeast. Yeah, a lot of words. Don't try and use your sourdough starter, and don't use bread yeast for this. You need to use this specific yeast. The cool thing that, about this pack is it just makes it so easy. You just give it a little slap, and then just let it sit out at room temperature for a few hours until it starts to puff up and then you can use it. Now, we're ready to actually make the beer, so... So you're gonna fill the grain sack with all these different cracked grains. 1.5 pounds of Belgian Pilsen, 12 ounces of German wheat, 12 ounces of aromatic wheat, 8 ounces of special roast, and 4 ounces of Munich malt. Now, I know these are a lot of fancy terminologies, like, they're literally just different types of grain. That's it. Now, just tie off your sack, then drop your sack into three gallons of water that's been heated to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure to dunk it in and out to make sure that it's hydrated, and let it steep for one hour, maintaining that temperature. Make sure to check the temperature every 10 minutes or so. Now, while that's going, I'm going to sanitize my carboy. Do not forget to sanitize this, and also the airlocks. Now, once that's steep, lift your sack out of the water and do not squeeze it. Instead, you're going to take four cups of hot water, and you're going to strain that through the bag and let it drain until it stops dripping. Then discard the grains and bring this liquid to a boil. Oh, and to that, you're also gonna wanna add five pounds of Pilsen Light Liquid Malt Extract. This sugary liquid is now known as the wort. Now, as soon as that comes to a boil, set your timer for one hour and toss in a half of an ounce of Sriracha hops. And then you're just gonna let that bad boy continuously boil for that hour. Now, when 20 minutes remain out of that hour, we're gonna add a couple different spices, which will be three grams of grains of paradise, 10 grams of coriander, and 65 grams of peeled sliced fresh galangal, which is basically like ginger. You can also use ginger if you don't have galangal. Wrap those in cheesecloth and tie it off with kitchen twine to make a bag, and then toss it in your boiling wort at the 20 minute mark. Then at the 10 minute mark, you're gonna add one ounce of Styrian Golding's hops, and then just finish out the boil with that 10 minutes remaining. Now once that 10 minutes is up, you need to let the wort cool down to 80 degrees Fahrenheit before you add the yeast. I usually like to do this by setting a little ice bath in my kitchen sink and plugging up my sink. Please be aware that at this point, the wort is in its most fragile state, you cannot let anything touch this that has not been totally sanitized. Once the wort reaches 80 degrees Fahrenheit, you can funnel it into your sanitized carboy using your sanitized funnel, then top it off with enough filtered water to reach the five gallon mark. Now at this point, a lot of brewers will check the specific gravity with a hydrometer so that they can determine its alcohol content at the end. Now it's recommended, but not a requirement, and you will just follow the instructions to take the reading, which if you do, the specific gravity should be around 1.050. Now my liquid yeast is ready because it's been sitting out. I already gave it a good pop on the bottom. So make sure you sanitize the bag, sanitize a pair of scissors, and then cut open a little end of it, and then pitch it directly into your beer. Then add your prepared airlock and its stopper. Make sure that it's fully locked down on your carboy. Then let it ferment at room temperature in a dark area with no sunlight for 14 days. Make sure that there's no sunlight at all. Oh hey, so you might be wondering why you're in my room right now next to my bed in a beer video. Weird. Yeah, it, it's weird. So, 
We're in my room because of this. Well, not this, but what it's hiding. What I'm doing here is I'm blocking the light so that this stays in the darkness. So this whole weird bit was basically just to make a point about that. So yeah, keep your beer out of the light. Thank you, thank you very much. After the first few days, you should notice a couple of things. A, your airlock is bubbling. You've got a foamy head on top, which is called Krausen. And at the bottom, you'll notice the yeast cake and then some other gases developing and lots of bubbles happening. These are all good signs and just let it go for those 14 days as described. Now, once you've hit that 14 day mark, it's time to bottle. Make sure that you're sanitizing your bottles and your bottle caps and your bottle capper. Yes, air thing. After that, make sure to prime all your bottles with priming sugar. I personally like to use conditioning tablets because because they're just easy. These are just pure corn sugar. I'll do about four to five tabs per bottle. Now this is where you're gonna need an auto siphon and a bottle filler, both of which are, guess what, sanitized. Surprised by that? Probably not. Now to fill my bottles, I attach my racking cane to a siphon and then the other end to a bottle filler. You wanna carefully place your siphon in your beer, but whatever you do, do not touch the bottom or siphon any of that yeast cake at the bottom. That's the trub, it's very yucky, don't get it. Carefully pump your beer through the siphon and press down on the bottom of a beer bottle to get it to start filling. Gravity should sort of do the rest for you. Then fill your bottle all the way up to the top and pull your siphon out. You should notice the liquid drop to a good spot. Some of these bottles of mine were actually underfilled, so yeah, don't do that. Repeat with all your bottles, then using a bottle capper, um, cap your bottles. You know, it's fun. Even better if you have a buddy helping you like my boy Chris from the restaurant I used to work at. Once you're done, place these bottles back in that dark place, put them in some sort of a box in case one explodes, and let them bottle condition at room temperature for three weeks. Make sure that they're all capped, by the way, if I didn't clarify that enough. After those three weeks are up, make some room in your fridge because these boys are gonna wreak havoc on the space in there. Stock your chili boy with beers and let them get nice and cold for at least 24 hours. Oh my god, okay, okay, I know the frig is open, there. After that, I would recommend using a bottle opener to pour and then drink the beer that you made. Enjoy it, and don't forget to flex on your friends because you made this and you should be proud. But you know what makes me proud? B-roll. <laughs>